Welcome to Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya. And now, more than ever, I'm Jeff Kinney. Now, all this week, we're mixing it up a bit, bringing you all kinds of themes and topics which are of some kind of inspiration to you. And on the bench today is a special guest in town for the very first time, not only in Kenya, but in Africa. You have to listen to her story in order to know how far she's come. Sit back, because she's only 37 years old, studied to be an electronic engineer, which is what she is by profession. And about 12 years ago, when she was barely 25, gradually she was introduced into a group, sect, religion, inspiration, whatever you want to call it, called BK, Brahma Kumari. And slowly and surely, it's about Raj Yoga, meditation, being in touch with yourself and a higher being. She got into that very religiously, if you will, and today she's a motivational speaker all across Asia, first time in Africa, traveling from Kenya, Uganda, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Mauritius. She is talking to people about problems, depression, relationships, the works. That's right. She's already motivated thousands, tens of thousands of people. In fact, the BKs have a following of about 800,000 loyal followers around the world. She's in town for the very first time. We have her on the bench. We want to know more about this, what she does, why she does it, and what she gains from it. My guest today, simply known as BK Shivani. What do I call you? Just BK or Shivani? Or? Just Shivani, fine. Just Shivani. Absolutely. Welcome to Kenya. Thank you so much. It's, it's wonderful to be here. Very first time. Absolutely. When you it doesn't feel like it. No? No. Does it feel like you've been here before? It's not connected with everyone. I mean, when I, while I was on the flight here and I said, oh, I had never thought I would ever be going to Africa, you know, how does life just take you to these different things? And will I be able to connect with the people there? I'm so used to connecting with the Asian community. And even in the other parts of the world where I traveled, whether it was Southeast Asia or whether it was UK, I was interacting more with the Asian community. But this is the first time where I'm getting a chance to interact with an altogether different community. But that doesn't feel like, because everywhere I've gone, whether it's the channel, whether it's a radio station, or whether it's just everyone around, I feel there's a lot of warmth and a lot of connectivity. It's just amazing, wonderful. What you're telling me is that even Africans are responding to this whole Brahma Kumari thing. Oh, beautifully. Absolutely. It's not about the Brahma Kumari thing. It's about ourselves. And each one likes to learn about themselves, share about themselves. And so everyone's so open to the whole idea. It's wonderful. For those who don't know, Shivani, what is Brahma Kumari? Explain it to us. Break it down for us. Uh, Brahma Kumari is an international spiritual NGO headquartered at Mount Abu, Rajasthan in India and spread in 120 countries all over the world. Learning practical application of spirituality. You know, spirituality was something we, we separated from practical life. We thought spirituality, religion separate, practical, professional, personal life separate. Brahma Kumaris is one platform which integrates spirituality into my personal and professional life with a practice of Raj Yoga meditation. And we have about 800,000 people all over the world, every caste, religion, creed that you can think of, who are staying in their houses, practicing profession, taking care of family, but taking care of themselves internally. And that's why being able to be very, let's say, stress-free, even in the present scenario. Even in this day and age of so much stress and tension? In this age. That is what is important. <laughs> so, you're studying electric engineering. You have no clue that you'll end up where you are now. I mean, what did you want to be when you were growing up? Just an electric engineer? I was, an, I was studying to be an electronics engineer. And, of course, I am one person who doesn't plan too much for the future. I like to take each day as it comes. And in the last 12 years, all the more my that thought has been reconfirmed. that let's take life each day as it comes because then you're more open and flexible to everything that's coming. And it can just take you in a very, very beautiful way. You don't have to plan too much. So I was doing electronic engineering, but then I came in contact with the Brahma Kumaris, started studying, saw amazing change in my song, which is continuing. It's a journey. It doesn't happen in one day. And then I got the opportunity to share this whatever I was learning, with everyone all over on the Brahma Kumaris platform. It's, uh, we organize workshops, seminars, conferences for professionals. And then I was, about four years back, I was taking care of a production house, which is called the Om Shanti Studio. 
it's a production house of the Brahma Kumaris. And my role was to take care of post-production and production, inviting guests, coordinating the program. So it was all back end. And then suddenly one day there was a guest was not coming. And the show had to go on. The episode had to go. And they said, there is no one today from the BKs here, so you better do it. And I said, no, I can't represent the organization. I'm too young. We have a lot of senior members who could come and do that. They said, there's no one today, so you have to do it. That was two years back. And I just sat there and I said, okay, the supreme power is his work. Let me just sit as an instrument. And that day we shot eight episodes because we had to send them a one-week material. And that series just with people. And then there's been a continuous thing. Okay, that was very good. So now again and again and again and it's been a year and a half. Wow. So it happened by mistake. It did. <laughs> but it was meant to be. It's meant to be. So you don't plan. Just flow. Wow. Just flow. And similarly, like I said, I didn't know I'll ever be in Africa. <laughs> and here you are. Yeah, you are. So tell me, what do people come to talk to you about? Like you yourself say, you're so young. And I'm sure a lot of older people come to you and they want they want you to help them solve their problems or identify their problems. How, how do you connect? Uh, it's basically now that I understand it that the problem has nothing to do with the age, the caste, or my relationship. It's more to do with me, my way of thinking, my way of perceiving. So it's the same for everyone. It doesn't matter whether it's a five-year-old child or whether it's a 90-year-old grandparent that I'm sitting with. And most of the issues that people are coming with today is either to do with relationships, a lot to do with relationships. Two relationships which are going through a major turmoil is husband-wife and parent-child. And most of them are coming for this husband-wife and parent-child relationship. And then we have children coming for addiction. And we have a lot of people coming for depression. So all that they have to take, a shift in their way of thinking is, till now they thought that other people are responsible for their state of mind. Their jobs, their bosses, their wives, their husbands, their servants, whatever. Uh, spirituality and Raj Yoga teaches us that I am the master of my mind, the creator of my thought, irrespective of situation. You know, even for the last two days over here in Kenya, I've been hearing so much about, okay, it's not been raining, or the political scenario is not very healthy, or whatever. But then what happens? This creates a victim feeling. You know, we've become very, I would call it, it's like an illness, that I'm a victim.